Hello, my name is Carrie Lynn. Welcome to Ready, Set, Plan for November week four, lesson 12 for pre-K to middle school. We're going to jump into pre-K first, but as always, I'm going to show you three different ways to find the lessons. So way number one, when you're on Music Play Online, the home screen, you're going to come over here and click on the grade that you're looking for under Explore by Grade. Perfect. And then over on the side, you're going to see Learning Modules. Click there. And now you have the full list of learning modules for pre-K only. So that is way number one to find learning modules. All right, let's go back to the home page and do number two. So we go to learning modules. That's on the left menu. And then the small menu, we click on pre-K lessons. All righty, that's another way to see all the pre-K lessons, only those. Now the third way is my preferred way because I like to see a whole breadth of different grades and lessons. So, starting at the home page, go to learning modules, and then instead of clicking anything in the little mini menu, I go up to add filter, and then I click on months slash weeks, and I know I'm doing November week four, so I go and find November week four, and there we are, all of our grades, pre-K to middle school, lesson 12. Makes it pretty easy, so we're gonna do it that way. Alrighty, so for pre-K lesson 12, November week four, we've got something pretty fun happening. Of course, every week, it's music, it's always fun, right? <laughs> um, but the first thing you'll see is a nice long list. Again, take a look at that list. If it's working for you, use the module as it is. If you wanna make some tweaks, or you wanna make sure nothing changes, come up here and click on copy to my list. It'll take this exact my list, or it'll take this exact lesson and copy it into your my list. From there, you can make edits, you can add, you can remove, you can organize, all the good things, right? <laughs> so that is for you to decide what you wanna do. We are a menu. You are the only ones who know how it's gonna work in your classroom. So scrolling through. Da, 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 da. So we're gonna sing and open our time together with its music time. Gonna tap on our beat strip. And I've included the, um, the printable and the supplemental materials in this lesson. So we tap the beat during the interludes. It's eight beats long, which is perfect for tracking left to right, using a pointer, using your finger, using a toy, working on the skill, right? <laughs> so that's number two. And then we bring the Hello Beat chant back in. Um, <clears throat> this wasn't used during the last couple years, um, but it's a really good tool to introduce different concepts, to review different concepts. For this week, we're gonna use it to review quiet and loud. So would you like your name spoken loud or quiet? Loud, of course, <laughs> right? And then, Hello, Denise. Hello, Denise. Hello, Carrie Lynn. Hello, Carrie Lynn. Right, so we're gonna review quiet and loud. And then we are jumping into the Goldilocks and the Three Bears story. So I've included the printable right here, just the story, um, but I recommend that you look at your library to see if there's a, an interesting book that you can read um, to your students, or maybe you are the animator, right? <laughs> and you add energy to the story. So that's there for there. And then we review Bear Hunt, which uh, ties very nicely into Goldilocks. So we're gonna review that song and then do the actions to Bear Hunt. Then we're gonna move and jiggle our bodies a bit with Hey Everybody. For the eighth procedure, you will play a drum and the students will move to show loud and quiet. So on your drum, you will play a beat. So, so maybe loud is a stomp. So I've also included the interactive down here, um, ways to move. I wouldn't use this one for pre-K, so I go to the next slide and use the one that has the different um, pictures. So let's say we want to march for loud and tiptoe for quiet. So we would, let's see if I can even stand up and show. I 
know you can't see my toes, but that's kind of the idea. Um, and you can pick different movements, whatever works with this, your students. And then we play quiet and loud sounds using the mystery box. So you can use that drum again, you can use any other instrument to show quiet and loud um, in the mystery box. So hiding it in the box and playing, can the students hear, is it quiet or loud? All right, so for procedure 10, we're gonna do the follow me game. This is a good copycat game um, and listening to what it's suggesting and doing those actions. Um, it does change, so the tempo does change. Another good way to introduce the concept. Um, so that is a really fun game. And then we're gonna review letter G. We're gonna do the G song and then Grumpy Gorilla. And then we're gonna do the actions for Grumpy Go Gorilla. And then we're gonna teach Godina, which is um, a song that Fred from Uganda has gifted us. Um, it's a great little song, so definitely move when the students are moving. And then we're gonna end our time with Skin and Rink. So that's it for pre-K lesson 12. If you're looking for more information um, or you're looking just for other ideas, extensions and such, I would definitely take a look at the teacher guide. The teacher guide is on Music Play Online in all the different songs under the song list. So definitely take a look. There's a lot of really good ideas in here. Alrighty, welcome to kindergarten, November week four, lesson 12. That long list that you see, those are all the procedures if that's too long or uh, there's some things that you want to kind of change about it, definitely copy to my list. Make those edits in your own lesson. Um, music plays the menu and you're the only one who knows your classroom. So definitely make those changes. All right, let's dive in. So first things first, we're going to sing Welcome to School, open our time together, and we're just going to dive right into the teaching material. We're going to teach phony baloney, which is an opportunity to kind of create some movement and also we are listening and experiencing 6-8, which is always good. <laughs> um, so we're going to teach that by rote and then create some movement with Phony Baloney. Uh, even just the name of the song is hilarious. And then we are going to teach Barnacle Bill. Barnacle Bill uses numbers, so it's a little bit of our math and we're working on our counting skills. Uh, but it also gives us another opportunity to experience 6-8, which is a good thing. This is going to be taught by rote again. Um, and then it also means that we get to create new lyrics for six to nine. So that's exciting. <laughs> um, so that is great for Barnacle Bill. And then we move to Old King Glory. We did Old King Glory last week. So this week we're just reviewing it. Um, and remember Old King Glory was attached to high low. If you wanna jump back into that lesson, definitely take a look at what we did last week um, and here. If you're looking for more extensions than what I've included here or in last week's lesson, definitely take a look at the teacher guide. All the teacher guide instructions are on Music Play Online under the song activities. Um, I would definitely take a look because there are some suggested extensions to that. Uh, so take a look. And then we're gonna play the King Glory game. Games keep us alive, you know? It's great. And then we're gonna review Teddy Bear. So teddy bear, we're gonna make up movements to go with the song, but also we're gonna jump into working and starting to label and experience how tones go up and tones go down, <laughs> right? So we're preparing to teach So Me. There are a whole bunch of different little activities in this one interactive. So I would take a look and see which one you wanna do. This is a review of teddy bear, so maybe you wanna do a different activity than we did last week. Uh, and then scrolling down, we're going to do which pattern game for teddy bear. Again, we're going to listen. All right, is it one, two, or three? Students can play it on the interactive glockenspiel, or if you have a glockenspiel in your classroom, definitely use that. Real instruments is always 100% better, right? <laughs> All right, scrolling through, we're going to... Again, with the heavy academics, right? Teach ABC Blues. Um, this one is an echo song though, so hopefully a little bit easier. And it's still teaching by rote, but it's an echo song. So that should be fun. And then echoing some patterns. ABC Blues is an echo song, so we're just expanding on that concept here. Um, I have put in 
an interactive, like a predictable slide to give you some ideas. No. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 ba. Right? But of course you can do it on any rhythms, any sounds, um, and I've given you some suggestions here too. And then our last kind of activity for this week is playing Walk, Tiptoe, Stop. Walk, Tiptoe, Stop is also working on different timbres of instruments. In the instructions, it recommends to use two contrasting timbres. So maybe wood for walking and metals for tiptoe, right? So very different sounds. And then suddenly we stop. If you're finding success, that's great. You can extend it by using different meters. So two, four, 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 maybe we go back to six, eight since we experienced it a little bit earlier on. Uh, three, four, five, four, you know. Um, but of course the, the most fun is when they stop, gotta freeze, right? Of course. So that is there for you. Just like in pre-K, I don't know if I would use this version of the locomotor ways to move because there are no visuals. But on the next slide, you can see the visuals. So decide what you want <laughs> um, to show. And then we end our time with Skinner Marink. So that was kindergarten lesson 12, November week four. Definitely check out the teacher guide if you don't have this. Um, and again, as I mentioned, this is actually all on Music Play Online, but this is just a little bit more streamlined and <laughs> organized whereas music play online is whereas music play online is a little bit more all over the place and you got to find what you need right so we're going to move to grade one hello so this is grade one lesson 12 november week four so the first thing you're going to see is a nice big long list again if you love it just continue right on but if you're seeing that there's maybe some the lesson's too long, or it's too short, or you want to do a little bit of editing, uh, definitely come up and copy to my list right here, copy to my list, and you'll have your very own that you can do your edits. Music Play is a menu. You're the only one who really knows what will work in your classroom, so we invite you to make the changes that you need to be successful. Alrighty, let's jump in. So first things first, we are going to sing the echoes for Welcome to Music. Um, that is what we've been doing for this whole time, which is great. And then we're gonna echo solfa patterns with Maya, Mi, So, La in F major. And we're gonna play a little poison melody with So and Me. For procedure number four, we're gonna teach the hello game. Definitely, if your students are at that point where they can read the solfege or they can read the rhythms, definitely encourage that. If they're not, no worries, teach by rote. Alrighty, so obviously we're gonna play the game because it's in the title, so you have to, you know? <laughs> uh, and then we're gonna do Punchinello. Punchinello is definitely a song taught by rote, and then we're gonna play the game. So basically how Punchinello game works, one student goes into the middle and does some movements, and then the students on the outside of the circle copy the movements throughout the song. I have the instructions here. If you're looking for more instructions, definitely check out the teacher guide. Um, I think Panchinello actually has some more extensions also, so I would definitely take a look and see if you want to extend this song. It's very fun, so maybe it's the right one. <laughs> um, and if not, there is a kid's demo here too. And then we go into the quieter portion of our lesson. So listen to At the Cradle. Uh, it is a lullaby, and we're going to also do Fedodo. So both of those are lullabies. If they have stuffed animals or puppets, maybe they can rock them to sleep, you know? <laughs> um, so we're listening to At the Cradle and then teaching Fedodo. This provides a really good option to listen to the 3 4 and experience 3 4 meter. Um, but this is also a lullaby. So it's another really good song to kind of talk about what is a lullaby. Is a lullaby loud? Is a lullaby quiet? You know, and working through that. There is an ORF arrangement that is available. So if you have that option, definitely consider that. Playing instruments is great. <laughs> um, and then we dive deeper into the concept of loud and quiet. There are a whole bunch of different interactive activities built inside this one activity. So I would take a look and see which ones you wanna do. Of course, there is creating the loud or quiet rhythm play along. Uh, so that's just on a beat. 
loud or quiet beat, right? Uh, and then if your students are reading rhythms, this might be an option too. And then if you want to do some more poetry, this might be a better option where you're reading each of these lines at a different dynamic level. So there are a whole bunch of little poems there. Definitely take a look. Maybe here's the chimney is the right one for this season. We're almost at the winter holidays, so maybe that is the right one. Okie dokie. And then we're going to teach down by the bay, a favorite. So we're going to teach by rote. And then, of course, create new verses for down by the bay because there's a lot that lives down by the bay. So definitely take a look at that. And then we're going to close our time with the music time is over. So hopefully that works for you. That is grade one, lesson 12, November week four. Again, remember that you can make any edits you want by copying this list or copying this learning module into a list and making those edits. Now we're going to move to grade two. Alrighty, welcome to grade two, lesson 12, November week four. So first things first, you're going to see a nice long list. Definitely take a look at it before you go into the lesson. Is this right for you? Do you need to make some changes? If you do, definitely come up here to copy to my list and you will take this lesson and it will copy into your list and then you can make those edits however you see fit. We are a menu, um, so only you really know how it's gonna work in your classroom. So definitely make adjustments to find success. Alrighty, so scrolling on through, we're gonna open with singing the echoes to Welcome to Music. And then we're going to echo sing Miso La in F major because we're preparing for Bluebells. So we did do Bluebells last week. This is just a review. So if your students are at that point where they can read Miso La, uh, I would definitely recommend reading that song. And as well, if they can read that rhythm, that is great too. If none of those are possibilities, no worries, teach by rote. Alrighty, and then we're going to play the Bluebells clapping game. As a quick side note, the only kids demos that we have of Bluebells is skipping rope demos. If your students are amazing at doing this clapping game, I would love to see a video. And with your permission and the permission of those that you need, I would love to put it on Music Plan Online so that others can see how to do the clapping game. And then maybe your students can also see themselves on the platform. Always very exciting. <laughs> so anyway, just quick plug there. If you need more information about the kids demos, definitely go to help.musicplay.ca and type in kids demo. And there's a whole bunch of information there, uh, FOIP forms and a submission box, all the good stuff. So definitely take a look. Alrighty, after the little plug, moving right along. So we're gonna complete the song sort for bluebells. Uh, pretty easy, just ta ti ti. And then read the solfa for bluebells if we're at that level. Um, I believe there's also a note name activity for bluebells. So if solfa is not your thing, you're doing note names, I would definitely remove this, like copy. Like, so take your lesson, copy it to my list, remove procedure six, and then insert the note version of this uh, if you want. So just to put that there if you need it. And then we're going to teach our new song. So we're going to teach Napoleon. Um, and it is an action song in French. Teach it by rote. And if French is not really your thing, just teach one phrase at a time. Alrighty, and then we're going to learn a little bit about Napoleon. And then we're going to do the actions for Napoleon, which is very fun. Good. And then we're going to echo sing with Maya again, because we're so lucky. <laughs> uh, this time we're going to do Do Mi So La in F major, because we're going to teach Johnny Caught a Flea. Uh, which is another really great one. And again, if your students can read the solfege or the note names, awesome. If they are not at that level yet, no worries, teach by rote. Alrighty, then we're gonna play the Johnny Cotta Flea game. Definitely take a look at that instructions or watch the kids demo to get an idea. If you're looking for more extensions, I know that this song has definitely a whole bunch of extensions. Take a look at the teacher guide or jump over into the song on Music Play Online and take a look at the song list. And it says song activities, that's a PDF, open it, boom, all that information right there. So that is great. We can name the sulfa notes for Johnny Cotta Flea. And then we have some options. So option one is to create a B section for Johnny Cotta Flea. Maybe you use different 
kinds of insects to create a B section, or maybe you're creating a totally different rhythm composition, you know? So here's some options here for you and a little interactive as well. And then option two is teaching the ORF arrangement for Johnny Cotta Flea. If your students are at that level, amazing. If not, or you don't have instruments like this, no worries, just delete this when you copy it to my list. Alrighty, and then we're gonna close our time with the music time is over. So that is everything for grade two, lesson 12, November week four. Hopefully you enjoy. If something worked really well and you're just loving it, definitely post a comment on uh, the YouTube channel uh, or share it in the Facebook group. We'd love to hear when things work. Um, and then if you have any feedback, definitely jump over to report a bug and submit that feedback to us. We're always looking to make it better. So definitely do that. And now let's jump to number three. Welcome to grade three, lesson 12, November week four. In this lesson, we have a whole bunch of fun things going on, so definitely take a look, and if it's going to work for you, just keep on scrolling. If you want to make some changes, no worries, go over to copy to my list, and it'll make a lesson in your my list, and then you can make those edits there. All right, let's jump into it. So, we're going to start off with brand new material. We're going to teach a uh, sailor went to Disneyland. Um, this is a rote song, so teach by rote, and then play the clap game. I have included the instructions in the lesson itself. If you're looking for more instructions or more information, I would definitely take a look at the teacher guide. Everything that's in the teacher guide is on Music Play Online. It's just kind of spread out. So if you're looking for A Sailor Went to Disneyland, go into the song list, type uh, A Sailor Went to Disneyland, and then you'll see it there. Alternatively, you can just click this little link as I went to Disneyland and you'll jump right to the song and then you're looking for song activities. That's what are in here. All right, so that is good. We're moving on. Alrighty, so now we enter into the options. <laughs> so for here, we have an optional playing on um, as I went to Disneyland on ukuleles and guitars. If your student, if you have ukuleles or guitars, definitely consider this. If you don't, no worries, just scroll past or delete. Uh, and then we're gonna just jump right into our concept. So we're gonna review dynamics. This is a dynamics play along. So we have different rhythms here and then you can put different dynamics and clap, play the different patterns at those different dynamics. So we are working on our dynamic skills. Alrighty, and then we're going to listen to Bourré. So this song goes from kind of like medium, <laughs> mezzo forte probably, down to a pianissimo. And then it, it grows a little bit, then it comes back down. And then it grows a little bit, then it comes back down. So hopefully this will work as a pointing page. Let me know. Uh, but there is a crescendo and there are dynamics. If you're looking for some slides to kind of explain this a little bit, definitely take a look at the next couple slides. Um, I've included them here so that you have a chance to explain what dynamics are, if this is the first time you're talking about dynamics, um, or also this is the first, uh, this is an opportunity to talk about crescendo and decrescendo, um, because that definitely happens in Buhay. Alrighty, so that is that. And then we're going to jump into, I believe, our final song. Um, so we're going to learn about persimmons. Alrighty, and then we're going to teach shake them. <clears throat> excuse me. And then we're going to teach shake them simmons. So this is a game song. So we're going to first teach by rote. And then, of course, we're going to do the play party. So I've included those instructions right there for you. And a kid's demo. Take a look. And hopefully you find success. And then we have some options for you. So option one, you can play the melody on boomwhackers or barred instruments. So... One of the things you're going to find out about this specific activity is that the first slide is colored boomwhackers. The next slide is kids notes. So it has the, I don't know if you can see it, but the little tiny letter names in them. Um, then at least the students are reading how the letter names are going up and down on the staff as opposed to writing them underneath, you know. <clears throat> and then finally, we have just regular notation. So depending on where your students are, take a look at those different levels and pick the one that you're gonna find success with if you're doing this option. We also have an option to teach the ORF arrangement uh, and then some creative ideas too at the very bottom here. 
So if you have ORF instruments, definitely check that out. And then our third option is to bring those ukulele and guitars back out whoop, and play Shake Them Simmons. It's C7 and F, very easy chords on ukulele. Can't speak for guitar. I am not a guitarist, but I do like to play the ukulele. Alrighty, and then we're going to end our time with Children Together. This is just a review of the song. If you haven't taught the song, maybe you want to teach it. Uh, it is a really beautiful connection song. Um, if you are teaching in a bilingual school or you're in Canada and you want to teach English and French, we do have a bilingual version of this under the Children Together song itself. So click that little link and it'll just jump you right there. So anyway, that is everything for grade three, lesson 12, November week four. Hopefully you find something good in there, and let's jump to grade four. Alrighty, welcome to grade four, lesson 12, November week four. So, for this week, take a look at that long list. We got a lot going on. So if that's too much, definitely go over it, copy to my list, and delete what you don't need. We are a menu. You're the only one who knows what will work really well in your classroom. So definitely remove what you don't think is going to work, add what you think is going to work, because we want you to find success. Alrighty, so we're gonna scroll through and see what we've got. Da, 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 da. Alrighty, so we're gonna review the choreography for Thankful, and then do the choreography for Thankful. We've been doing this for the last couple weeks, so. Alrighty, so the third procedure is going to kind of wake up our brains about tempo. Uh, we're gonna play the pop quiz. There are two levels to this pop quiz. This is level one. If this is too easy for your students, I would jump over to tempo pop quiz, and play level two. So, and then we're going to teach my Bonnie. So, <laughs> this is a very, very fun song. Um, so, first year you're just gonna probably, if your students are able to read it, amazing, have them read it. The rhythm is relatively simple. Um, there's quite a few <laughs> notes in it though, so see where your students are, and if, you need to definitely teach by rote, but most of them might have already heard the song before, so it might be kind of easy. Anyway, <clears throat> we're going to teach the actions now because this is too fun. So basically the idea is that any time a B comes up, you change position. So in the video, we're just standing up and sitting down. And let me tell you, your quads and your glutes are going to be feeling it tomorrow. So play this wisely <laughs> um yeah i won't even play it i won't even show you because it's just a delight to experience so you go for it anyway and then of course my bonnie starts going faster and faster and faster which is kind of the sitting up sitting down sitting up sitting down it's just a wild ride anyway so we're going to continue on that theme and we're going to perform rhythms at different tempos here uh there is a suggestion to try levels three to five and 11, 12, 13. Click this little house and then you'll see all the levels. And then at that point you can see, is that the right level for my student? Yes, no, and go on from there. All right, and then I have an optional tempo worksheet if that is what you want to do. Uh, and then teach what did Delaware. So this is a good song to start talking about the different states. So definitely take a look at that. There is an option to create other um, verses and lyrics for it that talk about other states or other provinces depending on where you live. So definitely take a look at that. Um, you'll find that option if you click what did Delaware and you jump over to the song. You'll also find that option in the teacher guide. So anything in the teacher guide is available online. The teacher guide is just all laid out beautifully in a book format. So pick the way that you like to experience information. <laughs> um, anyway, so there's those options. And then I have included the option to play What to Delaware on Woodmarkers or ukulele here. Here you'll see up at the top, the ukulele chords are there. If you go to the next slide, I'll kind of talk to you a little bit about um, or I'll kind of explain a little bit why I set it up like this. So What a Delaware, this is a boomwhacker collection. So the first slide, the cover, tells you which notes you need, <laughs> right? Before there's even any suggestion of notation. What do we need? Slide two, 
This is the colored notation. So if we're only still working in color, this is the slide for you. The next slide removes color and instead replaces it with the kids' notes or the little tiny, tiny, tiny letter, name, letter names in the note heads. And then the final slide is just regular notation. So pick the level that your students are at and yeah, should be good. So we're gonna keep on rolling. And then we're gonna learn a little bit about the percussion family. So this is one of the interactives. Um, if you're looking for more information, definitely click the Instruments of the Orchestra unit link that's right here. Uh, we have so much more <laughs> than just these two slides. So then there's a little review and a recap of what did we learn in that previous interactive and then apply it. And then we're gonna throw a little bit of creation in this lesson, so creating a rhythm composition. I have included a PDF of resources in the supporting resources that you can use instead of having everyone be logged in and doing a comp rhythm composition. Um, honestly, it's probably better to have it as note manipulatives so people, or so the students can arrange what they want for their rhythm. Um, but nothing wrong with interactives either. So depending on your students in your classroom, take, uh, take those two options into account. And then we're gonna play our rhythm composition. It's a bit of a folk, funky composition, um, beat track, accompaniment track, sure that's better. Um, and it is at 113 beats per minute. If that is too fast, definitely click those three dots, click playback speed, and make it slower or faster, depending on your students. And then we're gonna end our time with Trivia Wheel, Instruments of the Orchestra game, and that is that. So that is grade four, November week four, lesson 12. Now let's go to grade five. Alrighty, welcome to grade five, lesson 12, November week four. So you'll see by this humongous long list that we've got a lot in here, if you have not that much time, or you're working on something different, copy this to my list and remove what you don't need. Um, we are here to support you. We are a menu and only you know what works in your classroom. So definitely do a little bit of editing to find success. Alrighty, scrolling on through. We've got a lot of fun stuff in this lesson actually. So I'm excited. <laughs> um, we're gonna warm up our time with my Bonnie. If you did this in grade four, then you'll know how much of a hoot this one is. Basically, my Bonnie is uh, you stand up whenever, you stand up or sit down. So you change positions whenever you hear a B. And let me tell you, your legs are gonna burn like crazy. So keep that in mind and be wise with how many times you do it. Anyway, it goes faster and faster and faster, of course. So it just gets more and more fun. Anyway, so hopefully you find a little bit of success here. Um, and this is also an opportunity to reinforce three, four, and basically just have a great old, grand old time. So this is the actions. Uh, I've written them out here and then also included the kids demo. <sighs> it's just too fun. Anyway, okay. And then we're gonna perform, so kind of keep with the tempo concept. We're gonna perform the rhythms at different tempos. I have included the three, four examples here. If that's a little too challenging for your students, click on the little house and pick a different level. Um, I included three, four because my Bonnie's in three, four. Uh, so maybe if they're reading those rhythms, amazing. If we're not at that point yet, no worries. Pick a different level that you're gonna find success. Alrighty, and then of course there's a optional tempo worksheet if you want. And then we're gonna review Green Sally Up. Last week we did a clapping game, and this week we're gonna do the sevens clap pattern. So the next couple of procedures walk you through that. So it's great. Um, and of course, kind of challenging, that sevens clap pattern. I'm sure some of your students are like, they got it, but <laughs> it works this brain for sure. Anyway, and then we're gonna move into our like work songs. So we're gonna sing the scale. Uh, so this round is relatively easy to read. So if your students can read it, amazing. The rhythm should be pretty straightforward. And then also it's just the C major scale. So hopefully your students are at that level and they can read that 
either in Soulfish or in Notes. As you can see, that second line is already in Soulfish. <laughs> um, so, yep, that is that. So teaching that song. And then we have the optional playing the sing the scale melody. So you, because it's a C major scale, you could play it on boom whackers, you could play it on recorders, you could play it on bard instruments. Um, we don't have any of those assets built out just yet, but I've got it as a note for future. Uh, so that is what you have right now. And then because it's the C major scale, we're going to review the C major scale. So this is the kind of teaching interactive. So walk through that and work on that interactive with your students. And then we're gonna practice naming the notes in the C major scale here. So that's those two. And I've included an option um, to complete the C major worksheets. As you can see, there are four worksheets. Pick the worksheets that are gonna work for you. Um, and they progressively get more challenging. So also keep that in mind. <laughs> um, alrighty, and then we link a little bit of listening into our lesson and we listen to pianists. This is Matthew. He is actually the one who created all of these beautiful interactives and he is our main game developer. He's also a phenomenal pianist. So that's exciting <laughs> that he made that video for us. So listen to him play, uh, to play the pianists. This is so strange to say listen to, anyway. Um, alrighty. And then we have an optional where if you have ORF instruments, bard instruments, or boom whackers, um, or even recorders, honestly, where you could actually play the beginning parts of the pianist. It's a pianist warming up their fingers on scales. So, yeah, you can play along if you want. That option is there. And then we end our time together with note toss game, C major, how many can you answer before the time runs out? Alrighty, that ends our time together. That is grade five, lesson 12, November week four. Okay, now middle school. Alrighty, welcome to middle school, lesson 12, November week four. For this lesson, you'll see that we've got about 13 procedures. If that's too much, definitely copy to my list and remove what you're not gonna use. If that just works great for you, let's scroll down and see what we've got. So, first things first. We're gonna listen to Santa's Coming For Us. Yes, yeah, Santa's Coming For Us by Sia. Um, and this is the official music video. This is a really interesting video because they actually baked in the lyrics to the video. So you could have your students sing it um, if that's what their comfort level's at, or maybe just watch it and kind of discuss what you see. It is a different time period, so there are different things in this video. So it's an interesting compare and contrast to what we have today. So take a look, it's also a pop. We also have the verse chorus kind of in between form going on. So whatever your students are kind of looking for and is gonna keep them engaged, I would take a look and do that and let us know for sure so that we can build out those resources. Right now we don't really have a lot built out for these pop songs. So let us know, what are you looking for with these pop materials? We can't provide notation, we can't provide lyrics. So what else can we provide for you? Alrighty, anyway. Let's move on. We're gonna learn the choreography for Santa's Coming For Us. That is John, so that is great. And we're gonna do the full choreography because learning is one thing, doing is another, right? Anyway, and then we're gonna review the song Green Sally Up. We did this last week and that was when we did the clapping game. Now this time we're gonna do the sevens clap. So the next couple of procedures will kind of walk you through how to do the sevens clap pattern. So we have learning and then practicing and then doing the sevens clap pattern. Again, the sevens clap pattern is a little challenging even for me. So hopefully your students got it. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna play which rhythm do you hear? This is the uh, dotted quarter with an eighth um, pattern. And that's because in the next song, we do have that pattern come up. If that's a little too challenging for your students, click on which of them do here up here, that little link, and pick a different level. Alrighty, so now we're gonna do Teach Suo Gan, uh, and depending on your student's reading abilities, you might be able to read the rhythms and the solfa or note names, or 
just teach by rote. All up to you and your students. And before I scroll on, you'll see that there is DC Alfine and Fine, so it does give you an option to talk about repeats and how that kind of works in music. Alrighty, we're going to learn a little bit about Suogon, which is a Welsh lullaby, and uh, the dragon got me, you know, I love dragons, knights, all that stuff, so. Alrighty, so your first option is to play Suogon on ukulele or guitars, it's a two chord song. We have one in the key of F, so you have F and C7, which is super easy on the ukulele, and not so easy on the guitar, so we did include also the key of D, which is a little bit more easy on the guitar, and just as easy on the ukulele, because it's not hard to get. <laughs> um, Anyway, and then we do have the key of D, which is a little easier on the guitar uh, and still just as easy on the ukulele. So there is that option for you. And again, because you're playing it, um, working on what do repeats mean in action is always a good idea. We also have an ORF arrangement available if you want. That's there with some creative ideas. And then, of course, if your students are already um, playing recorder really well, I have included a two-part soprano recorder option here. You will know, though, that it's not just two parts. There's actually three parts. So if you're also doing alto recorder, this is an option for you as well. There is a uh, part for the alto recorder, but I didn't mention it because not many people use the alto recorder. But because you watch this video, if you have an alto recorder, definitely use it. Anyway, that is the end of middle school. Lesson 12, November week four. I hope you enjoyed. Please let us know if anything worked for you. And if you have any suggestions, definitely uh, chat us up in the comment section in this YouTube video. Like, definitely please subscribe. And I'll see you for the next lesson, I guess. December week one, next week. Bye.